So you're thinking about moving to Bellingham, Washington, and you're wanting to know more about the good and the not so good associated with life in Bellingham. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you the top pros and cons associated with life in this area, and we're going to get started right now. <laughs> Hey, if this is your first time to the channel, we encourage you to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you can be the first to know about all the content that we're releasing about Bellingham, about Whatcom County, and about all the great things that are going on here in this area. My name is Jeff Engen. I'm with MJB Real Estate Group, and every day we get calls, texts, and emails from people just like you who are considering a move to this area, and we absolutely love it. So whether you're thinking about moving tomorrow, 10 months from now, sometime in between, we encourage you to reach out. All of our contact information can be found below, and we are standing by and ready to help in any way that we can. But for now, let's talk about the pros and cons of life in Bellingham. All right, so first things first, I wanna share with you that I have lived in Whatcom County for the last 39 years of my life. And having grown up in Bellingham, I believe that there are far more pros than there are cons associated with life in this area. And accordingly, that will be reflected in the video here today where I will be sharing with you more pros than there are cons. But I would encourage you to hop online, leverage the power of Google to find out some others' opinions on this area and see how they compare and contrast to what I'll be sharing with you here today. The other thing that I do want to share is that in a past career, I traveled fairly extensively throughout the United States. So flying 100,000 plus miles per year, managing a sales team in all 50 states of the US, and I've spent a lot of time in a lot of other beautiful areas of the country. Now, many of those I would like to visit a lot more often than I do, but I've never found another one that I would rather call home than here in the Bellingham area. So diving in to pro number one here on my list is location. Seattle is just 90 miles south of Bellingham. Vancouver, BC is approximately 50 miles north. Anytime that you want to take advantage of some of the amenities that can be found in a bigger city, you can travel to one of those destinations, realistically taking you anywhere from 90 minutes to two hours, depending on traffic, to get to SeaTac Airport, to get to Vancouver International Airport, to get to amazing restaurants that are perhaps above and beyond the caliber that we have here uh, locally, to get to entertainment venues, to sporting events, any of those things. Being in this particular location and being in a community the size that Bellingham is without the detrimental impact of being in a big city is amazing and you've got a lot of great stuff in those bigger cities that's really close by again without the detriment of you know population traffic etc that you would experience living in those big cities pro number two on the list is outdoor recreation so if you've been to the area before you've seen things on the internet on you know TV movies you've heard about friends coming to visit the area, they've likely done something with regards to outdoor recreation while they've been here. Bellingham is positioned between Mount Baker and Bellingham Bay. Both of those things providing you all sorts of opportunities for recreation. Uh, of course, up at Mount Baker in the winter months, you're gonna have tremendous uh, skiing and snowboarding, snowshoeing, uh, you know, hiking, all that great stuff. In the summer months, more with regards to accessing the trails, the alpine lakes, camping that can be done up in those areas. Whereas down on the bay, you can take advantage of water sports, you can take advantage of fishing, kayaking, paddle boarding, uh, canoeing, visiting the islands, the San Juan Islands that are just in proximity to us here. So even just between those two things, Phenomenal opportunities for recreation. Outside of that, we've also got phenomenal biking opportunities. So if you're into mountain biking, we've got Galbraith Mountain, we've got the Chuckanuts, we've got even some trails down in the Sudden Valley area that are quite popular for mountain biking. If you're into road biking, Bellingham is phenomenally friendly to road cyclists. So um, as you're traveling the main throughways or even in the downtown area, you're gonna see on our roads in Bellingham, all sorts of markings, lanes, communication with regards to what you need to be doing as a cyclist versus what you need to be doing as a motorist in these particular areas. So great for bicycling. We've also got opportunities for hiking, for camping, for trail running, uh, hunting and fishing. The list goes on. The, the Pacific Northwest is a phenomenal place to spend time outdoors and the Bellingham area uh, has a lot to offer you in that regard. Number three on the list of pros I'm gonna share with you today is population size. So the population of Bellingham is approximately 90,000. Uh, the population of the county as a whole is approximately 225,000. So we are big enough 
to have the majority of the amenities that you need, to have good medical facilities, to have uh, good restaurants, to have uh, access to some smaller scale entertainment venues. Again, still being in this great proximity to some of these bigger cities like Seattle and Vancouver for if and when you want to take advantage of the amenities that are offered in those areas, but without a lot of the traffic, the congestion, the noise, the pollution that you might deal with in bigger cities. One of the big things that comes up a lot when we're talking to people about the different areas of the county that they might consider living is where they'll live in proximity to where they might work or where they might uh, enjoy recreational activities. And a lot of times here in Whatcom County, the distance between point A and point B might be something like 20 minutes, maybe even 30 minutes. A lot of people that are coming from bigger cities, bigger communities are used to sitting in traffic for an hour, 75 minutes, 90 minutes, just to get from home to the office or vice versa. So population size is fantastic because again, it's giving us access to the majority of amenities that you're gonna want and need in a community, again, without uh, the detriment of living in a more populated area. All right, so number four on the list of pros is food. Now we have a tremendous number of fantastic restaurants, many of which are, are independently owned and operated. We do of course have, you know, uh, from a chain perspective, your McDonald's, your Taco Times, your fast food establishments are of course available to you here. But when we're talking about going and actually sitting down for a meal, uh, going out for a special occasion, we've got fantastic restaurants. Um, and just to name a handful uh, of some of my favorites, uh, you know, if we get an opportunity with my wife to go out for a date night, Rock and Rye is a place that we like a lot. The Fork at Agate Bay, which is out uh, kind of off the beaten path a little bit. Storia Cucina, Italian place downtown Bellingham. Uh, the Soy House is a fantastic Vietnamese family owned and operated restaurant. There's a ton of good food here in Bellingham and Google will help you find uh, the right spot for you, both in terms of you know, reviews, providing you access to menus, restaurant websites, all that good stuff, but tons of fantastic food, a lot of farm to table. Um, so a lot of the restaurants that are here are partnering directly with farms and sourcing their ingredients directly as opposed to getting them through distributor, which means fresher, better, healthier, just amazing food that we've got here in this area. All right, so dovetailing really nicely with number four, which was food, we have number five, which is beverage. Now, uh, as you might expect, or as at least I would expect here in the Pacific Northwest, we have to have a variety of good options for you with regards to coffee, and we do. Uh, I was just at a place called Make Worth Market this morning, fantastic coffee. Another favorite of mine is uh, Adagio. Tried out a new place that's just been open a month here the other day called Maple Bar. We have a lot of fantastic coffee for you here outside of Starbucks, which I, I do generally enjoy, but these local places go above and beyond in terms of quality, freshness, preparation, uh, the time, the effort, the love that they put into making their drinks. Now, also a big favorite here in the Pacific Northwest is beer. I believe Bellingham is at 14 breweries at this point in time, so per capita, we're up there uh, in terms of giving you lots of great opportunities with regards to breweries. Some of my personal favorites are Colshin, Wander, Stemma, uh, Boundary Bay Brewery was one of the originals, one of the first here in Bellingham uh, that, that has uh, pretty good national distribution, so you're likely familiar with Boundary Bay, but a lot of good beverage opportunities, handful of distilleries that are here for you uh, as well. So be sure when you come to visit, uh, you gotta check out the coffee shops, the breweries, all that good stuff. So next on the list, number six of pros is community. Now, one of the best examples that I can give you for um, this focus on community here in the Bellingham area is an organization called Sustainable Connections, and you can actually visit their website at sustainableconnections.org. If you go to that site, you'll see their mission statement is written as follows. We create thriving communities through innovative ideas, collaboration, and action. And if you actually take the time to go look at the membership list of companies that are members of Sustainable Connections, you'll see that there's over three 300 local companies that are part of this organization. Now these range from you know, fitness facilities to manufacturing organizations to real estate offices to restaurants to you know, automotive services. I mean, the list goes on, it's comprehensive. And so Bellingham is big on community. They're big on supporting local, they're big on buying local, um, they're big on looking after the community here locally and supporting that outside, above, uh, and beyond your you know, stereotypical retail. So big emphasis, especially this time of year as we're coming into Christmas on uh, supporting local, buying local, 
and um, participating and partnering with a lot of the local businesses that are here in this area. All right, so last but not least on our list of pros is the weather. Now that might be confusing to you. You may be thinking, hey, I, I've actually heard that it just rains all the time in Bellingham and in the surrounding area. And we'll actually get to that. We'll address that on our list of cons as well. But I do wanna share the weather as a major pro, particularly in the summer months here in Bellingham. If you've not been to the area, if you're planning a trip sometime soon, would encourage you to consider kind of the July, August, maybe early September, uh, maybe late June time frame, as we get these extra long days, 16 plus hours of daylight. We get these temperatures that are in the mid to upper 70s, uh, maybe all the way up to the mid 80s, occasionally getting warmer with that, but your, your average temperatures are in the, the 70s and 80s, relatively low humidity, uh, and you've just got these phenomenal, beautiful, long days to go out and enjoy uh, a lot of the parks, the things that we talked about, you know, in our in our recreation section. Uh, so the weather for me, particularly in the summer, is a major pro to life here in Bellingham. Hey, switching gears a little bit, we want to talk about some of the cons to try and be fair. Again, as I shared in the beginning, I believe there's far more pros than there are cons to life in Bellingham, but we're going to give you this list of cons as well. So number one on the list of cons is limited access to the amenities that you might find in major cities. Now, again, when we talked about location and our proximity to Seattle and Vancouver, this is gonna afford you the opportunity to enjoy a lot of these amenities in bigger cities. But if you're looking for you know, big comedy shows, uh, major league sporting events, uh, you know, high-end fine dining restaurants, you're probably gonna have to travel outside of the area. Now, Lo and behold, again, Seattle being nice and close, if you're looking to participate in uh, you know, a major league sporting event, of course, the Seahawks, the Sounders, the Kraken, a lot of great opportunities for that down in Seattle. You've got the Whitecaps MLS team and the Vancouver Canucks up there in Vancouver, BC for professional sports. Both those locations provide you tons of options with regards to fine dining and high-end uh, restaurants. But if you're looking for you know, kind of that nightlife, that entertainment here in the local area, you are gonna be a little bit limited in your options. Um, places that you would wanna check out, particularly for music, would be the Mount Baker Theater uh, or the Wild Buffalo, both as great uh, music, concert, theater uh, venues here in the local area. And we do have minor league sports that are here. So we've got the Bellingham Bells, uh, our baseball team. We've got the Bellingham Blazers, which is our hockey team. Uh, we have the uh, Bellingham United soccer team as well. So those are all semi-professional sports that are well supported here in this local area. But again, if you're looking for that big city nightlife, we've got limited options for you here in Bellingham. Number two on the list of cons with regards to life in Bellingham is that it is a bit more expensive to live here than it is in other parts of the country. Now, according to payscale.com, Bellingham has approximately a 20% higher cost of living than other parts of the country than, than the national average. Now, while our utilities actually end up being more affordable than most places throughout the country, we do have our expenses including housing, food, and transportation that are all mildly or somewhat significantly more expensive than the national average. Uh, one thing that I do wanna note, cost of housing. So according to Redfin, uh, in the current month, November of 2022, the median home price in Bellingham is $575,000. Now, that may be higher than other places, but a bright note that I want to uh, provide for you even on this list of cons is that if we just go back to June here in Bellingham, again, according to Redfin, the median home price at in June was $685,000. So as we've talked about, as you've likely seen in other videos, if you've not seen my other videos, I encourage you to check those out. Uh, but we do talk about things like interest rates, how they're impacting the market. With rates going up, we have seen a decrease in the number of sales, an increase in the number of days that homes are sitting on market. And in conjunction and correlation with that, we're seeing a decrease in the uh, list price and the sale price associated with homes. So despite the fact that interest rates are currently high, you've gone from June, a median home sales price is 685, down to November, median sales price of 
75. Not gonna get into it here, but still believe it's a great time for you to buy a home, particularly if you can address that problem of, uh, of high interest rates. And we've got ways to help you do that. So if that's something you're thinking about, reach out, we'd love to share more about that. Uh, but last but not least on this, this list of cons, uh, was, was on our list of pros as well, is the weather. And uh, like you have probably heard before, we do get a fair amount of rain. The days in the winter are short. A lot of them are gray. Uh, I've been trying to post videos, uh, actually shorts on YouTube here recently with regards to uh, the weather at different points throughout the winter months because we've had a ton of beautiful, gorgeous, sunny, cloud-free days uh, here in November and as we get into December. But it is true, it does rain here. Uh, approximately 40 inches a year. I've shared this in other videos. What I think happens here that's different than other places is that as a national average, you know, 40 inches isn't tremendously off the mark for what you see as annual averages in other parts of the country. But what is different here is that, you know, when it rains, it's typically a drizzle and it stretches out over a longer period of time. Versus other areas of the country where you might, you know, even in Phoenix, for example, get monsoon season and it comes in and it just dumps a tremendous amount of rain in a short period of time. And that's going towards that total accumulation and you're just kind of getting it out of the way quickly. It's more slow. It's more drawn out. Um, again, compare and contrast in those summer months, we're talking about those 16 plus hour uh, days of sunlight versus uh, in the winter months, days get down all the way to eight hours of daylight. Uh, here actually in the month of December. So take the good with the bad. The temperatures do tend to stay relatively uh, comfortable. Uh, average winter temps are in the 30s and 40s. Although as I record this video, we're, we're down in the 20s with a little bit of a cold snap that we've got going right now. So if rain, if gray uh, is a problem for you, if you're used to living in a place where you've got 300 some odd days of sun per year, and you're gonna make the pivot to Bellingham, be advised that you're probably gonna to wanna to get a couple uh, trips, a couple vacations on the books to soak up some sun in the winter months uh, here in the Pacific Northwest. Hey, as always, I hope this has been helpful to you. I encourage you one more time to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications so you can keep up on all of the videos that we're releasing about Bellingham, Whatcom County, and all the things that are going on in this area. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks so much.